Hello and welcome back. So with 2022 coming to an end, I wanted to take some time to look back at this year and evaluate what's gone on. Uh, today we're going to go over my top five worst takes on the year, and then at the end we'll sprinkle in some good stuff to head into 2023 on a positive note. Now, these will be the top five worst calls I've made, and most of these were preseason calls, uh, and we'll go from least egregious to most egregious, although you may have a different opinion on that. So we'll start this countdown off at number five with Val Nichushkin. So I, in the overdraft video, uh, there was a list of players who were overperforming their five-year averages. I said Val Nichushkin is more than likely an overdraft uh, and that he would definitely be due for regression. And I highlighted the fact that he went an entire year uh, playing for Dallas where he didn't score a goal. Uh, and unfortunately, I was dead wrong. So he is, uh, in terms of the data draft player hub, which you see here, he's an 82 rating. That's 11th best in player leagues. I'm sorry, 11th best player in category leagues with hits and blocks. So as you can see here with the hits and the blocks added in, he gets a little bit of both. And then on top of that, he's above 91 percentile in every offensive category, uh, 0.40 power play points per game, over three shots per game, over a point per game. He's got uh, 16 points in 15 games, seven goals, nine assists, five power play goals, uh, six power play points, a shorthanded goal, a game winner, uh, and again, over three shots per game. So I was dead wrong about Val Nachushkin. He has had some injury trouble, uh, hoping to stay healthy. Colorado's been doing a, a lot of that, hoping to get guys back from the IR. They're uh, supposedly getting McKinnon back uh, potentially today. So uh, this could potentially be a nice buy low opportunity on Nachushkin if he's sitting out there, but he's probably not. He's relatively owned up right now. And if you went into your draft uh, trying to target him and I talked you out of it, I apologize for that uh, because it's definitely hurt you over the, the course of the season. Now, moving to number four, this one's not as bad um, because I didn't say Fiala was bad. In fact, the whole video was about not drafting Fiala and waiting for him to pop off in the second half. And I highlighted in that video that every year he's you know relatively human in the first half uh, 0.66 points per game, 0.5 points per game, 0.76 points per game. And then in the second half of the year, he explodes and he's over a point per game. Last year, he went from 0.76 to 1.27 points per game, which was good for 10th in the league in points in the second half of the season. Um, but he has started off really, really hot right now. So um, 10 goals, 26 assists, 36 points in 39 games, 10 of those on the power play, and almost three shots per game. Uh, he's got a .95 point per game average, and I just highlighted this on the Data Draft Instagram account. Uh, with the average this high, do you actually think that he's going to pop off like he usually does in the second half? Because if so... Now could be a nice opportunity to try to buy low or not even buy low. Just you're buying at a regular price on uh, Kevin Fiala and hoping that he exceeds this in the second half, which he has done pretty much every single year over the past three or four years. So uh, this isn't necessarily something I got wrong, although I did say not to draft him. So I did get it wrong. So um, this is a guy that I would expect to pop off in the second half. Uh, and I did kind of highlight that he was a good player, but I just did not expect it to happen right off the bat in L.A. Now, another thing I got dead wrong, and uh, I don't know if it's cut off at the top. It looks like it is, but fading Matt Kachuk. So this blockbuster trade goes down, Huberto for Kachuk, and right off the bat, I'm thinking to myself, it's easier for Huberto to generate offense than Kachuk. Kachuk makes his living in front of the net. Uh, I highlighted that he is not Brady Kachuk. He doesn't hit. So a lot of guys think that he does. He's like Brady in that he's going to get you, you know, two, three hits per game, and he doesn't. He's at... Uh, less than one hit per game, less than one block per game. But the difference was he wanted to go to Florida. Huberto did not want to leave Florida. So Huberto goes to Calgary and he does not perform well at all. In fact, I've highlighted him as one of the most disappointing players of the season this year. And then you look at Matt Kachuk, uh, and he's 93rd percentile or better in every offensive category, as you can see here. So this is for hits and blocks. If you did this without the hits and blocks, he'd be you know one of the best players in the entire league. Uh, and you can do that by look, uh, clicking on the Patreon link in the description below. I have the, This is the Data Draft Player Hub. I have the Player Hub without hits and blocks as well. Uh, so you can just look at the offensive categories, and he would be in the 90th percentile. He'd be a 90-something rating. Um, but... I was absolutely wrong on this one. I thought that it was easier for Huberto to generate offense than Kachuk. Kachuk has come 
to Florida, and he has put up 1.25 points per game. His goal per game pace is about a 40-goal pace. Uh, he's averaging 3.59 shots per game, so he's doing a little bit of everything, uh, and he's arguably the best offensive player in Florida right now. Uh, Barkoff has missed some time, and he just went off for a five-point game, but consistently it's been Kachuk, so I was definitely wrong about Matthew Kachuk. Now we get to the ones that probably hurt your team the most. Uh, and, you know, when when I highlight uh, some of the things that I talk about in these videos, one of the things that I've said a couple times is that I'm uh, less effective at evaluating goaltending, which is why I created the Data Draft Goaltending Hub, which takes into account a lot of the things that I was talking about in the preseason. Now, Demko and Markstrom, these were the two worst goaltending calls that we had on the channel. Um, Markstrom, I listed as an elite G1, um, and we'll get to him in just a second. But Demko, it's just difficult for me to, to see this coming. Um, he's third worst in the league right now in goals saved below expected with negative 11. He only has three wins on the year, a 393 goals against an 883 save percentage. If you compare that with last year, he had 61 starts. He was 33, 22, and 7 with a 272 goals against and a 915 save percentage. And if you look at his career history, he only had one year that was relatively close to this, and that was 1920, where he had a 905 save percentage and a 3.06 goals against. So this came out of nowhere. So it's hard for me to say it was a bad call, but it definitely was. I mean, look at this. He's he's one of the worst rated goalies in the Data Draft Player uh, Goalie Hub, um, and then he's obviously one of the worst goalies in fantasy this year. He's on the IR right now. Uh, if he's there, I mean, take him at your own risk. Uh, it could only go up from here. He's He can't get any worse. Um, so, yeah, just keep that in mind. And then we look at Markstrom, who I'll, I'll put in here. So Markstrom, much, much better than Demko, uh, but I did highlight him as an elite G1. Uh, he's got 11 wins on the year, 2.81 goals against, 894 save percentage. Um, so it, it's been a little underwhelming, and he hasn't necessarily carried the flames the way that he was the previous season. Um, and this falls into the category of following up a career year with another career year. It's very difficult to do. I thought that Markstrom was going to be more capable of doing that. Um, but, you know, he just didn't get off to the greatest start. But the saving grace here is his numbers are climbing. So he had a 9.05 save percentage over the last month. Over the last two weeks, that's gone up to a 9.08. So he's trending in the right direction. Now could be a good buy low opportunity for Markstrom. But either way, I got these two calls wrong. It was just very difficult to see this in the data, which is uh, the one thing that I'm looking at when I make all these predictions. Um, as I'm looking at previous uh, you know, history and Markstrom and Demko had not shown uh, anything like this. Uh, maybe Markstrom had a down year, uh, his first year in Calgary, but Demko, this came out of nowhere. Uh, so very difficult to predict. And I definitely got that one wrong. Markstrom has been, I'm sorry, Demko has been one of the worst goalies in the entire NHL. And that brings us to number one. And I wasn't just wrong here. I was spectacularly wrong. So uh, as a Rangers fan, I had watched Georgiev for years. And you had seen uh, earlier in his stay with the Rangers that he was capable of this level of performance. But he did not show it in the last two years he was there. And I saw it firsthand. Uh, he was basically given the net when Lundqvist and Shesterkin were unavailable. And he fumbled it and just did not play well. They had to call up Keith Kincaid to save their season the one year and then he was given the ball again the next season and just he had an 898 save percentage it just wasn't working for him I thought the play was going to be to take Francois deep in the draft and hope that Georgiev falters and that Francois takes the net that did not happen so 15 wins 2.4 goals against 925 save percentage two shutouts and he's the second highest rated goalie in the data draft goalie hub uh, which takes into account all, all these metrics, wins, goals against, save percentage, um, expected goals, and goals saved above expected, um, which is all in this category here, and then team defense, which also factors in as well. Um, but Georgiev is even higher than Shesterkin right now, who was a first-round pick. He's higher than Vasilevsky, who was a first-round pick. Uh, he's one of the best goaltenders in fantasy. Um, and the easy play is to just take whoever Colorado has as their goaltender. Uh, and I was highlighting why you shouldn't necessarily do that uh, in the offseason. So definitely wrong on that one. If you compare that with Franco's, not bad. Four wins, 2.8 goals against, 913 safe percentage. So it's not like he's been worse, uh, you know, significantly worse. He's, he's definitely not as good as uh, Georgiev. But Georgiev did not fumble that ball. He ran with it. And he has become one of the best goaltenders 
in fantasy and arguably one of the best in the league this year. Uh, although the best goalie in the league uh, is at the top of this list, Linus Allmark, and we'll get to him in just a second. So those are my five worst takes. So let's kind of counterbalance that. Uh, since we're trying to bring some positivity into the new year, I thought I'd quickly recap some of the best takes this year and just give you a sense that I'm not as bad as some of those takes that you just saw. So the first uh, few guys at the, at the top of this list, Skinner, Carlson, Chikrin, they're all on this deep league plays video. And I almost hit on every one of these guys. There's a couple that I missed on. Uh, LeBanc has been okay. I mentioned him as a deep, deep league play. Uh, Granlin's been okay. Kessel really didn't go anywhere. Gallagher didn't. Um, Dadanoff didn't. Uh, some of these guys have been deep league steals, though. Pajot, especially in, fa in uh, faceoff leagues. Stall. You know, all of these guys. I was high on Skinner in the preseason. I, you know, highlighted him again right before he went off uh, for that five point game. I was high on Eric Carlson all preseason. And, uh, you know, I don't want to necessarily say I'm Nostradamus or anything, but you look at the data and you saw that he was starting to score last year at the pace that he's on now. Um, and he's popped off and has become one of the best defensemen in fantasy. Logan Couture is a top 50 Yahoo fantasy player right now. Clayton Keller is top 100. Jacob Chikrin, if you stashed him on IR, uh, that paid off for you. I made an entire year, meant, uh, I'm sorry, I made an entire video uh, highlighting that it would be a career year for Matt Barzell, uh, and it has been. He's been uh, spectacular this season. I made another video dedicated to Jason Robertson and how he, was, he missed camp and that that would actually be good for production. If you want to double check that, just go back and look at the video. Uh, I thought it would kind of hurt its production, but after doing the analysis, it was actually uh, showing that it was going to be a good thing for Robertson, and it has been. He's been one of the best players in the league. Then in the money bag syndrome video, I highlighted Trocek and Giroux as non-money bags guys. And if you took that advice, Trocek is 27th in the Data Draft Player Hub with hits and blocks. He's Yahoo ranked 38 in category leagues, and I got him in the 11th round. So if you did the same, you're probably uh, you know laughing all the way to the top of your Yahoo uh, championship ranking. So um, those two guys have been pretty good. I was pimping Jack Hughes all summer, especially highlighting his goal and shot pace. Um, on the year this year, 20 goals, 21 assists, 41 points, 13 on the power play, 1.15 uh, point per game, 0.53 goal per game, which is a 43 goal pace, and 4.15 shots per game, which is 99th percentile in the league. So he's been uh, absolutely uh, exactly what I thought he would be. He just got drafted a lot higher than uh, I was able to get him. If you stashed Marshand, Point, McAvoy, or any of those guys that we were talking about uh, pre-draft, you're laughing right now. It was uh, one of the best moves that you could have made. They all came back earlier than expected. Uh, right now, McAvoy is the 15th best player on the Data Draft Player Hub uh, with hits and blocks. He's an 81 rating. Marshand is right behind him at 79. And Point is at a, a one point per game pace, uh, 0.53 goal per game, which is a 43 goal pace. And he's averaging over three shots per game and a 0.31 power play points per game. So those guys are all killing it right now. And you probably got them in the eighth, ninth, tenth round. Uh, so you're probably feeling really good about those calls. Another one that I mentioned, I was fading uh, Mo Sider all preseason, and that was the right call. He's still good for hits and blocks, but him and Sherratt have been one of the worst D pairings in the league. They're ninth worst in expected goals against, and he only has 12 points in 34 games. Um, he's at minus 13, only four power play points, so definitely not a fourth round pick, which was where he was going. And pretty much everybody else in the fantasy world was really high on Mo Sider. I just didn't see it in the data. And he's a young defenseman, so there's not a lot of track record there. I like to stay away from a lot of the younger players, as I mentioned in the rookies video. Uh, the Truba Nurse as elite hits and blocks, guys. So Truba is 97th percentile in hits at 3.11 hits per game. 99th percentile in blocks, 2.46 blocks per game. Uh, Darnell Nurse, 96th percentile in blocks, 1.97. But he's more complete overall. He's a 71 on the data draft rating scale compared to a 59 for Truba because Truba's had a lot of struggles uh, offensively this year. But he is elite in hits and blocks. So if uh, you did pick up one of those two guys, for those category coverage uh, reasons, you're probably doing really well in fantasy right now. And last but not least, in a mock draft video, I highlighted Carter Hart as a deep G3 option. And if you took that advice, it probably paid off for you for about a month. Now, in October, he was 5-0-1 with a 231 goals against and a 938 save percentage. 
And if you listened to me and sold high on him at that point, you may have parlayed that into something really nice for your team. But these are just some of the better calls that I've made to try to counterbalance. Uh, you know, it's not all bad. I didn't want to just uh, make this a negative video and just give you the stuff that I got wrong. So we'll kind of counterbalance it. But let's see what you guys had to say. Um, so I asked a couple of guys in the Patreon group. Uh, Allmark was one of the guys that I was constantly getting uh, feedback on. Allmark call had been clutch. And that's mainly because I was talking about him and Swayman with that tandem, uh, getting exposure to Boston's defense. Um, I didn't necessarily signal him, uh, single him out and you know, kind of highlight him as a, a standalone G1, which is what he's become, uh, the best goaltender in fantasy. But if you did listen and you didn't know who he was or whatever, um, yeah, you probably are winning your league right now because he's been the best goalie in fantasy. Uh, a bunch of people have mentioned him. Uh, Marshand, Gibson being a bad goalie, uh, obviously, uh, I, there's a couple of guys I was telling you to stay away from. Um, yeah, I did wait on Natchez. Uh, I didn't think that this was coming, so that was another one that I got wrong for sure. And then um, this one, Jack Campbell as a G1, I did have him on the G1 list. Uh, I can't remember what I said about that in the goalie video, but I was not high on him. I just you know, he was a G1 by the, the, the criteria I was using in that video. Uh, he got about 50 starts. He had a 915 save percentage, top half defensive team, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and then fading cider was a good one. But then that brings us to what you guys said on the YouTube uh, when I asked this uh, in the YouTube community section or whatever. Um, and Richard says, drafting scoring right wingers early got pasta in the second round. So that was a, an entire video I made in the draft strategy uh, video series. Um, you know, centers are a little bit more available on the waiver wire. Wingers are more scarce. And so you want to get your goal scoring wingers uh, first and then try to prioritize centers later in the draft. And then don't draft goalies early. And that was uh, the first video on this channel, the first element to the data draft strategy, the one that's made the most difference for my teams and for this channel. And that brings us kind of full circle because this has been a crazy year for me personally. This project has gone better than I expected. And it's all thanks to you guys out there watching the videos, joining the Patreon groups and allowing me to continue making these videos and helping your fantasy teams. I want to sincerely thank each and every one of you out there who takes the time to listen to me babble on about fantasy stats and whatnot. Uh, and here's to growing even more in 2023 and hopefully being able to make this channel financially viable. Now, speaking of that, if you want to support the channel, gain access to the player visualizations and or player hubs uh, and get access to our elite fantasy discord group, just click the Patreon link in the description below. Uh, but that's going to do it for this video. Thank you all so much. I hope you have a great 2023 and I'll see you in the next year technically, but I'll see you tomorrow with the weekly video. Thanks again.